Iedereen in Nederland kent inmiddels Dennis de Pennis. De roodhaarig idioot die in dienst van de BBC filmsterren en ander tuig afzeikte. Een heerlijke man, precies goed voor BNN. Maar helaas, de serie is bijna afgelopen en er komt ook geen vervolg. Waarom denk ik dan? Want een brutaal mens heeft de halve wereld en soms zelfs een eigen omroep, toch? Maar ja, hij stopt er wel mee. Hij heeft zijn naam veranderd, zijn haar geverfd. Was het echt zo erg? Durft hij niet meer? Is hij bedreigd door Kevin Costner en Demi Moore? Nou, om antwoorden te vinden op deze vragen ben ik in Londen. De vermeende woonplaats van Weile, Dennis de Pennis. Nou, het is inmiddels zes uur en nu weten jullie wel dat ik het allerliefste mensen midden in de nacht uit hun remslaap haal. Maar dat zal ik bij Dennis maar niet doen, want ik weet niet of hij daar zo goed tegen kan. Weet je wel, misschien uh, is hij wel heel gauw op zijn teentjes getrapt. Maar dan schijnt hij hier te wonen op nummer 51 en dat is toch wel een redelijke buurt moet ik zeggen. Dan gaat de deur vanzelf open. Ik hoor wat. Hi! Wat zeg? Good evening! Come on in. Hi, thanks. Thanks for the bike. Oké. Okay. Tell me how we're going to go and do it. Paul. Hi, Bart. Nice to meet you. Hi. So. Love, yeah. Hi. For the whole Hi. squad. Yeah. Uh, down or up? Doesn't matter. Down is probably more. We'll follow you. Oh. Okay. Right. So. Shalom. Hey. Well, that's nice. That's you. So it is. Looking very young and fresh. Yeah? Mmm. How long time ago was this? Um, how long ago was it? About two years. There's the gravestone. Oh. <laughs> Dennis Penn has died. Yeah, but still available for corporate work. When did you stop being Dennis? Um, uh, last Christmas. It was a Christmas present to myself. Yeah? Yeah. A, a present? Yeah. Why? Because it was getting boring, and there were a lot of people copying what I was doing, and there wasn't anyone else to do. And the only people I could get hold of were the people that wanted me to get hold of them. So they'd come up and say, "Oh, take the piss out of me, Dennis." Yeah. Say no, fuck off. But 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 it was getting boring to you. Yeah, I mean it was two. I think I did it for two years, and you sort of hang around in the rain, waiting for people that never show up. And towards the end, the bouncers got too heavy, and uh, I'm a chicken, really. Really? Yeah. Oh, you you don't show it on TV. Well, once you've had your nose broken twice and your finger, you think, well... Your nose broken by who? Um, by... That was Al Pacino's bouncer. No. Yeah, that was Elton John's um, big friend. Sheet of muscle. So you're a little bit of a, of a chicken? Um, well, I've got... Obviously, I've got substantial balls. I've got fairly big balls. But uh, I was just worried they were going to get, you know, stamped on. Um, yeah, it was just dull, hanging around. I mean, I think I did, there was a list of the highest paid Hollywood stars, 50, the top 50, and I think I did 48 of them, so, job's done. But, but was it so hard to make, to make Dennis? No, it was easy. I mean, a pair of glasses, a few badges, the, crap American accent. Are these the... Oh, yeah, they the, might the, well be, actually. The, yeah. the, the original glasses? Hi there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So it's it's it's. Well, the it's I a thought, trick. Well, I'm it's a big. I'm a, it's like I'm a big uh, Johnny Rotten fan, big Woody Allen fan. So it's sort of like Johnny Johnny Allen or Woody Rotten. Dennis heet eigenlijk Paul Kay en is acteur. Hij heeft niet al te veel geld overgehouden aan zijn BBC avontuur. En dit prachtige huis is dan ook niet van hem. Al logeert hij hier al maanden in de kelder. Paul werkt nu zonder enige haast aan een nieuwe tv-serie zonder Dennis Pennis die uitgezonden moet gaan worden op Channel 4. En verder maakt hij vooral veel op. How did you come up with the jokes? Well, it depends. Some of them were like 
you know, a lot of time hanging around, so you've got time to think about them. Other times, things like Steve Martin, when I asked him why he wasn't funny anymore. You're not anymore. funny anymore, yeah. I mean, you can prove me wrong in, you know, in five seconds, but... And he, he wouldn't do any of his press in England for Bill Cohen and stuff. But, but are you, you behind your computer and making up jokes? Or no, or sitting you? in the pub, drinking. And Alcohol and speed. That's it. It's the secret, kids. <laughs> Kevin. Hi, man. <laughs> Morning. <laughs> Listen, I've come a long way to see you. Listen, in Waterworld, you play some kind of fish. Don't you think it was inevitable yeah, you get you know battered what? by and the British? And I'm with you with the fish. Hey, it's, I like fish, man. It was with uh, Kevin Costner, uh, a question about Waterworld. Oh, yeah, and stop man. asking about the fish. Well, the thing you... about him was, he was like, we'd do him, we knew that Venice was absolutely perfect. Can is too big, he's got too much ground to cover. Venice, you know, you could get him on the way in, get him on the way out, leg it down the road, get him when he arrives at his hotel. Just ruined his, his stay there, it was fantastic. And, but I couldn't believe that a guy that big could get pissed off with some little, you know, spectacled ginge like myself. But he was angry, he really lost it. And he'd rung up Tom Hanks and warned him that I was going to be there. Listen, you missed a nice guy, man. You missed a nice guy. You're always nice, sweet, and lovely. Can you look at the camera and say something disgusting for our viewers? A few people you did a, a, a few times, like uh, Demi Moore. You did her twice. Demi's, Demi, and, Demi and I have become great friends. <laughs> sure. Great friends. Yeah. Yeah, no, I couldn't believe she kept stopping for me. I, I, a lot of them don't actually register what's going on. I think they're so used to being asked the same boring question. Hi, right, Demi, can I ask you a question? BBC, under any, under any circumstances, if it wasn't gratuitous and it was tastefully done, would you consider keeping your clothes on in a movie? <laughs> yeah, I like that. If these people are nice, they always come across as nice. If they're horrible, they look horrible. So it's, you know, it's a nice little... Um, gauge of their personalities. I ate most of them anyway. Mo most of the fun was doing it like pea shooters. When we couldn't get anyone, we just had pea shooters. And <laughs> yeah, I, got, I got Tony Curtis's girlfriend in the neck. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get near her, so I just went <laughs> so, <laughs> Tony, so... Tony! Hi, my name's Dennis, man. I specialize, I specialize in making celebrities look ridiculous. But I don't think I'll bother this time. You're doing it better than I could. It was amazing. In those early days, we'd just get invited everywhere. And you'd get to go into the parties. And you'd go around with that thing. You know, the pag light, so it's dark. And then you sort of bang the light, you know, you, you trap them like moths. They love it. Cher? Cher? Cher, BBC? Hi. Has, uh, has anyone ever told you you're, you're really beautiful and, and meant it? No. <laughs> I'm sure. Towards the end, honestly, you just couldn't get near anyone. It was so frustrating. You'd have all these great ideas, and you just you just wanted to just get a machine gun. Yeah. Do it. Well, the one with the Spice Girls I had at um, Marble Arch, they were launching Channel 5, and I had this fucking huge fire extinguisher on me. I felt like an assassin. It's fantastic. <laughs> I had it like, in my jacket. Terrorist. And I was just going to ask them if they thought they'd reached saturation point, and then just do them, and then got arrested. And it's like, it's so depressing. It's like losing the cup final. Did you get arrested a lot? Yeah, a few times, but the cops, you see, that was the other thing. You'd get, you'd get sort of policemen who'd say, um, right, Dennis, you know, I loved your video, great, really good, but step over that line and I'll fucking nick you. So you'd sort of get this sort of compliment, compliment with a threat in the same breath. I am BV, as seen on TV. Now, I did this, um, I did this thing where uh, I was in Leicester Square and I'd just come back from America. And I said to the camera, I went, um, you know, I'm so paranoid. I, I can't go out in the streets without people recognising me. It's really driving me nuts. You don't believe me? Take a look. Walk around the corner, I've got this on my fucking head. <laughs> With a megaphone going, I am Dennis Pettis, <laughs> as seen on television. Who are you? Who are you? I am Dennis Pettis, as seen on television. Who are you? Who are you? I am he, GP, as seen on TV. Oh, yeah. I cannot go anywhere without people recognizing me, and it's really beginning to depress me. I am BV, as seen on TV. It is me. Don't look. I am trying to live a quiet life. Hear ye, all I want to be is left in peace. Leave me alone. I am a quiet man. I just want to be by myself sometimes.
glasses, just Woody Allen, punky, old rotten look, you know, blazers, badges, big boots, um, and a cheeky smile. And yeah, that that's it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, it's just I don't know. Fun. No, it's fun. It's nice to do something sort of mildly subversive, because I was always a bit of a bedroom punk. I always sort of dreamed of doing something that would piss people off. And then I actually got to do it. So he's dead? Oh, he's dead. Can you bring well, him... Well, he's in, in a coma. Can you bring him back one more time? Can you do a, a station call? I'm not cheap. I'm okay. very cheap. Okay. Can, can you say, um, when I'm in Holland, I always watch René Mioch? I could say that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I did something that looked very much like René Mioch recently, and it wouldn't flush. Oh. Okay, that's all he likes in there. In fact, I'll tell you a story. Yeah, right. What? When we first moved in, yeah. I don't want to keep going on about masturbation, but the only way to wank without anyone seeing you. It's by crouching behind the couch over there, yeah? And I thought I got away with it, but the lights cast a huge shadow. There's a 10 foot shadow if you're going like that. <laughs> it's about the eighth time I've mentioned what I've got to go have a wank. I'll meet you in the pub in two minutes. Just a quickie. No feeling. <laughs>